one of the most underrated cuts of meat from lamb, goat, but especially venison, brought to you by my friends at Shepherd Song Lamb and Goat Meat from Downing, Wisconsin, is smoked lamb, goat, or venison shanks. Smoked shanks. What we're going to go over is basically the difference between uncured shanks and cured shanks. The first ones are uncured shanks. Basically, this is seasoning meat with salt and pepper, letting it sit overnight, and putting it in a smoker. That's it. That is an uncured shank. A cured shank is going to mean that the shank has been seasoned with pink salt, which is going to keep the meat pink after cooking, and it's going to taste more like ham. So if meat is pink after it's fully cooked, it's always been treated with some kind of pink salt. And depending on what you want to do, either one of these can be very good, but they are a little bit different, especially because the cured shanks are much more salty. So all we're going to do with, with these, the uncured ones, we would put salt and pepper, and then I'm seasoning them with a dry rub. Then we're going to refrigerate them overnight before smoking. Okay, for the cured shanks, you can see they, even, they look different here because this one has a, a wet brine. So they look much different when they come out of the smoker. First thing we need to do is make a brine. This is exactly the same thing as if you were going to make ham. So we have salt, water, pickling spices, and then very different from the uncured shanks is pink salt. And that is Instacure number one, definitely not number two, which is for like salami. Another difference is that we add sweeteners to the brine. Like I said, this is just like ham. I have some sorghum molasses there and a little bit of maple syrup. You can use brown sugar or you can use white sugar, but you need to add some sugar because it helps curb the salt here. And if you buy a smoked shank or a ham at a store, this is exactly how those are made. So this is for like adding to soup and stews and especially split pea soup. But you just take your shanks, put them in the brine after it's cooled. And then another big difference here from the uncured ones, they need to sit in that for five days. Generally speaking, no matter what size of your shank, it's going to be about five days. They won't get too salty. If you, forget, if you forget about them for a day or two, then we'll take them out. And if you want to go really hardcore, you can leave them in the fridge overnight to dry out the outside. That'll help it absorb the smoke a little bit better. Then when we're smoking, you can just cook them at like from 275 to 300 until they hit 150 degrees Fahrenheit. You don't have to cook them that long. And that's what they're going to look like. You can see the uncured shanks are on the right. Notice I did two of those and only one of the cured shanks because the cured shanks are much stronger and they go a lot farther because you're making soup or something out of them. But the cure, the uncured shanks, you can eat as a roast. And when they come out of the smoker, I like to wrap them in cling film that helps them not dry out. Then to eat these uncured shanks as an entree, I'm going to wrap them in parchment and basically what this does, you can do this for ribs and all kinds of things. This just makes it so they steam while they bake. And then we're going to bake those in a slow oven until they're nice and fork tender. And this is kind of what they're going to look like. You can also do this with a Thanksgiving turkey, wrapping it in parchment or a paper bag. So this is not as salty as the cured shanks. So you can just sit, you can just eat this like a roast. And that's what you want. The meat should not fall off the bone. It should be like ribs. There should be a little bit of resistance, but it should be tender enough to pull apart with a fork if you want. But the meat should definitely not be sloppy and falling off the bone. You get docked in a barbecue competition for that. So then you can just carve that like a roast. That is absolutely delicious. I mean, just look at that. Have you ever eaten a shank like that? It's fantastic. A little bit of some herby green sauce or some chimichurri is excellent with it. Or just a squeeze of lemon and a little bit of olive oil and some rice. Wonderful stuff. Okay, using cured shanks. This is going to make a lot more sense if you have been struggling with understanding the differences here. The cured shanks are much more salty, so you use them exactly as you would ham or a ham bone. So what I'm going to do, okay, you can see that that meat is still pink even after it's been cooked. And look, we have complete penetration. It's not gray by the bone. If you leave the shanks in the brine for not a long enough time, it'll be gray next to the bone. It's not a huge deal. And we're just going to cut those into some nice bite-sized pieces. 
and we will make sure to save the bone as well. And what we're gonna do is make a little bit of split pea soup, just with lamb ham instead of regular ham. We'll start the soup off with a little bit of garlic and we'll add some vegetables. My pot was actually a little bit too small here, so I had to upgrade it. And then we're just gonna add that shank meat, add that bone, and then we'll add a whole bunch of split peas. Man, is there nothing like split pea soup on a cold day? I mean, one of the most comforting soups I know. And then that is some nice bone broth that I had left over from last week. And then we're just gonna cook that until everything's fallen apart and it is all rich and delicious and looks like that. And you can see, just like a ham bone, we just cook the soup with that bone in there. You can take it and pick some of the meat off, the extra meat if you want, but really good variation on your classic split pea soup. But any place where you'd use a ham bone is gonna be great. The full recipes are on my website in the link in the video description. Thanks for watching.